The Lord, I want to greet you all in the name of our Master and Lord Jesus Christ. We are meeting again today on this special Sabbath, the 24th of February 2024. After a long break, I'm sure we had communicated what had transpired. That's now part of history, and today we are continuing where we left. It was a very difficult time for me to be on this break due to circumstances beyond our control. But we want to praise the Lord, for we are now able to continue with the sharing of God's word. And today, our topic is entitled Trials and Temptations. Trials and Temptations. May God bless us as we go through the pages of the Bible discussing this special topic especially in these trying moments. Our moments are very different the world over, but uh, the principles of dealing with the trials and temptations are universal, for they come from the Bible. The Bible was written for all times and seasons, and uh, therefore we will find rest for our souls if we apply the principles that we find in the Bible. Today we are going to consider a text from the Bible, from the book of James, and the book is James chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. I will read in your hearing, James, a servant of God, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have your perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. May God bless the reading of his word, we shall pray. Our Father who is in heaven, we want to thank you on this special Sabbath for the opportunity that you have given us to open your word. May you bless us, may you illuminate our minds, so that when everything has been said and done, we may say, yes, there is God in heaven. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Trials and temptations. There are four basic lessons that we want to find from the book of James. James chapter 1 can be divided into two parts and is pegged with both spiritual and life lessons. In this presentation, we'll explore some of the lessons we can learn from the first part, which has to do with the trials and the temptations. The lessons that we find in the book of John, if I am to preempt them, they are basically four. The first one teaches us to face trials with joy. The second one teaches us that hard times make us stronger. The third one teaches us that rewards come after trials. And lastly, we learn that our desires tempt us. These are the four things that we are going to explore. I want to uh, inform you, my brothers and sisters, that in the coming presentations, we are also going to explore the concept of stress management. We want to discover how is it that Jesus, amidst all that opposition, was able to live without stress. There's no way in the Bible that we discover that Jesus went into a depression. There's no way in the Bible where we discover that Jesus was plagued with the blood pressure. Neither did he suffer from ulcers or sugar because of stress. How did he manage to live a life above all those things? What made him successful? We want to thank the Lord because the Bible is loud and clear, and it is one of the things that we are going to explore because people are dying because of stress. People are dying because of blood pressure. People are dying because of stress. Suicides are happening everywhere. But what is what was the secret of Jesus' power? What made him to float above all those challenges? We know that he faced opposition day in, day out. The only time he would not face opposition was when he went up into the mountain to pray. And we want to explore this concept and say, Lord, 
how do we how as his children are we supposed to live without all these pressures even the people of god the men of god his disciples we the followers of jesus we sometimes encounter stress we sometimes encounter this lifestyle disease the blood pressures and the stress so in the next presentations we want to understand how we can live and survive as if we are floating above all these challenges what was the secret of jesus power it is the next study that we are going to explore but today we are laying the basics because that stress that we encounter comes from the trials and temptations that we meet on a daily basis so going forward would want to explore this concept and say how did he manage to float how did he manage to survive why is it that we have no record of his blood pressure why is it that we have no record of his stress why is that we have no record of ulcers that came because of pressure and stress it is the next episode that we'll then look into but today let's go back to our discussion trials and temptations the four lessons that we want to go through today james chapter 1 and the verse is 2 if you go into the niv version it says brethren consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, James is saying, consider it pure joy. This is the secret of Jesus' power. Even if we are going to examine it in future editions, but in this edition we discover that whenever he faced the trials and the temptations, of all kinds, he consider it pure joy. And James is saying, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials. Normally, when we face trials, we become anxious. We may blame the devil or question God for the situation we think he placed us in. In general, we don't consider it pure joy. That James now is saying we should consider it to be joy. You see, there is the secret of overcoming trials and temptations. Even the way we view trials and temptations. The Bible is saying when you meet this iceberg called trials and temptation, you should consider it joy. How radical does it, how radical it changes our perspective to trials and temptations. Because the Bible is saying, when you meet, whenever, it doesn't say, if you meet, which means it is inevitable that trials and temptations are going to come. So by using this word, whenever, rather than if, James indicates that trials will come. If we continue to view them the way we usually do when we inevitably encounter trials, we will continue to experience negative feelings. But a simple switch in how we perceive them can make a big difference in how we experience them. So the Bible is loud and clear that the biggest pitfall we encounter when we meet trials and temptations is to view trials and temptations negatively. But the Bible is saying, count it, count it pure joy. Rejoice when you get into temptation. It changes, it radically changes the, the, the dimension, the perspectives. And this morning, I want you, my brothers and sisters, to appreciate that the only way we can float above all these, these challenges is to remember and know our enemy. Whenever we meet challenges, the enemy is not the person. Whenever we meet trials and temptation, the enemy is not the person. Neither is the problem the problem. But the Bible is saying, count it pure joy. We will discover later why we should count it pure joy. But when we change this dimension, how we view trials and temptations, to count them as joy, the Bible is saying that will make us behave and react differently to them. In other words, this could be another way to manage stress. 
Because when you're stressed by the challenges and the problems that you encounter in life, but when you count it as pure joy, it means you have got joy, joy, joy in your heart. When you are happy inside, even the outside expresses itself the same way. Even your internal organs, you know, the body, the human body is a clever organism. When you are stressed, it means your heart is suffering, your kidneys, your lungs, they are responding. But when you are also happy, the same organs react positively. So, James chapter 1 verse 2 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And the use of the word whenever is informative. Because it's different from the word if. Whenever simply means it is inevitable, trials and temptations will come. To a Christian's life, it is your daily bread. It is your daily bread. We can control our response if we count it as pure joy. When faced with the trials, looking at them as James chapter 1 verse 2 says, we should is often the only thing we can do to make the situation better. One writer called Phil Harding says, we can't always control what happens, but we can control our response. We cannot control what happens, but we can always control our response. So you need to make an election. How is it that you are going to respond when you face diverse temptations? Are you going to respond with joy? Are you going to respond with sorrow? You can control those two choices. Are you going to sit back and cry all day long? You can control those choices. So we can control our response. And when we control our response, the Bible becomes the syllabus. It says, count it pure joy. Count it joy when you fall into diverse temptation. This is what James chapter 1 is telling us. The point, the second point that we want to make, is that hard times make us strong. James chapter 1 verse 3, I read in your hearing, the Bible says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. In other words, hard times make us strong. That's the second lesson we get from James chapter 1. It tells us that when we fall into hard times, they make us stronger spiritually. They make us stronger. If you want to be, if you want to move from being a feeble Christian to a stronger Christian, you need to count it joy when you get into diverse temptations. Why? Because the Bible is saying, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The word perseverance is instructive. You find that in NIV version, of James chapter 1 verse 3 uses this word perseverance to describe what the testing of our faith produces. It means persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. If you go to the Oxford Dictionary. So when we talk of perseverance, we are referring to persistence. We are referring to persistence in doing something despite difficulty or a delay. There are some people who have made shipwreck of faith because there has been a delay in the answer to their petitions. There are people who have made shipwreck of faith because of the difficulties that they've encountered in the path of obedience. But James is saying, my brothers and sisters, remember that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It makes you strong. You're no longer a pushover Christian. You're no longer a pushover believer. But you are strong with the faith. For the Bible requires us to be strong with the faith for we shall face these temptations of even greater magnitude. But who are going to stand in the day of God of Jehovah? Those that have been standing strong. Those that have been standing strong are going to last the mile. 
And James is giving us warning in advance to remember that we are supposed to persevere. The New Living Translation uses the word endurance. James goes on to say, let perseverance finish its work so that, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. James chapter 1 verse 4. And like challenges, we get ourselves into that we can easily get out of when it's hard. We rarely have a choice when we are faced with the trials of life. Having to work our way through it, no matter how long it takes, forces us to grow. When it comes to trials and temptations, we don't force ourselves into them. But we are led into them. For that trial and that temptation, they, perf they give us, they, they, they perfect us. Those are the chisels and the hammers that perfect us and remove dross from us. That's the purif purification process that a believer has to undergo. It is of necessity that trials and temptations should come. Why? Because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And John, proceed, and John James proceeds to say that uh, uh, let perseverance finish its work. So that you may be a mature and complete, not lacking anything. In other words, when Jesus was facing trials and temptations, it was making him a mature, complete, and perfect Savior. If we want to be complete and mature Christians, and perfect Christians, we are supposed to count it joy when we get into temptation. For they work in us completeness, perfection, well-rounded. So building, so building on top of facing trial with joy, point number one we discussed, we realize that we can do so because it produces perseverance and endurance. As we develop more endurance, we can take more in life. And as James 1 says, eventually not lacking anything. So point number one. We say decount it joy when you face many temptations. And point number two, remember that when you go into temptations, those hard times, they make you stronger. Let's go to the third point. Let's go to the third point. Let's go to the third point. The third point is that rewards come after trials. James chapter 1 verse 12, I read in your hearing. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. This is a New Living Translation. It says here, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Another lesson we can learn from James chapter 1 is that rewards come after trials. Although producing perseverance is a reward in and of itself, there are often other rewards that follow trials. This verse teaches us that while we may not see any benefits of enduring testing and temptation immediately, ultimately it will lead to receiving the crown of life. My brothers and sisters, let me declare to you this Sabbath that there is no one who is going to test an iota of the bliss of heaven if he has not overcome trials and temptations. For the rewards are just beyond the trials and temptations. As we pass over through the trials and temptations, Yonder and beyond, after all has been saved and done, there is a reward to those faithful servants who remain watching for the day is coming. Those who soldier on, those who count it joy, those who endure, those who persevere, those are the people who have got rewards awaiting them soon after their trials. 
This is what is John is saying on the third point. To say we should remember that the Lord, because he is a law, is, is a God of love, is awaiting to reward those who are going to demonstrate to all the unfallen worlds that it is possible that we can live without sin. Even in a world that, in a world that is full of trials and temptations we can still live without sin. And this is what James is saying. So these four lessons are very critical to the success of a Christian. As we go forward, my brothers and sisters, the fourth point, in terms of these rewards, James chapter 1 verse 12, it, 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 it says it is speaking of spiritual rewards that come from enduring testing and temptation. But this lesson applies to rewards from other trials in life also. Take weight loss, for example. The reward of being in better shape doesn't come until after the trials of exercise. So, if you want to reduce your physical body weight, it doesn't come cheaply. You need to endure exercise, eating to the gym every morning, running all those miles every morning and afternoon, evening, and you start to lose weight. So in other words, the reward of, 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 of a proper weight comes after the trial and temptation of physical exercise. And the same goes with the spiritual rewards. That these rewards, they come after enduring testing and temptation. My brothers and sisters, if you read the stories of some, some of the people that achieved greatness in life, there is usually a period of difficulty that each of them first went through. So be encouraged and patiently endure when you are faced with the traps, for it is the law of success that before you can test paradise, there is supposed to be some Egypt that you are going to suffer. There is supposed to be some Goshen that you go through. There is, some to, there is supposed to be some Red Sea that you are supposed to cross. There is to be some testing and painting in the, in the desert that you are supposed to go through. There is to be some experience at shitting that you are supposed to go through. Before you can go to Canaan, there is a pathway that you are supposed to follow. My brothers and sisters, the Bible is loud and clear. That it is the law of life. It is what we are supposed to face daily. And lo and behold, those who endure, they get the rewards after testing. My brothers and sisters, James chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, the Bible says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their evil desire and enticed. The last lesson we meet here, my brothers and sisters, changes our perspective of temptation, giving us more power over it. The last lesson changes our perspective of temptation. My brothers and sisters, we might think that God is tempting us to see what we would do. But according to James chapter 1, that is not the case. I always hear people saying, God already knows what we would do when placed in a certain situation. The situation reveals to us what we do. Not that God wants to, not, not that God want, wants to know what we would do when placed in a certain situation. No, situation reveal to us what we would do. In reality, James 1 is saying it's our desires that are the source of temptation. This explains why, why everyone is tempted differently. We are not tempted the same. We are tempted differently. But I want you to, re to remember that our desires can change. So since temptation stems from our desires, it means that our temptations can change because our desires can change. 
And if our desires can change, it means that they can be changed in a way that reduces or eliminates the, tempt the temptation to do wrong. We should avoid the temptation. Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, the Bible says, lead us not into temptation. So this other part of James chapter 1 <clears throat> says that uh, we are tempted when we are dragged away by those desires and entires. This implies that even though we may have evil desires, we can avoid being tempted by them if we don't let them take control of us. If we are tempted to begin with, we are much more likely not to see. As James clear in this book, Atomic Habits, puts it, it says, it's easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. My brothers and sisters, it is easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. Similarly, when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray, he did not say, help us resist temptation, but rather, lead us not into temptation. So if you are vulnerable to being tempted when you are in a certain place or around a certain thing, by staying away from it, you can avoid being dragged away by it. We should avoid temptation. <clears throat> in conclusion, my brothers and sisters, the lessons that we have learned today are that, number one, we should face trials with joy. Number two, hard times make us stronger. Number three, rewards come after trials and our desires tempt us. My brothers, it is my desire today that you should remember this whenever you are faced with the trials and temptations. As I speak right now, my brothers and sisters, there is someone who is facing a myriad of temptations and trials. There are people who are deep plunged, deep down in the gorge of trials and temptation. And you are wondering whether God has forsaken you. But let me tell you this day, my brothers and sisters, that we should face our trials with joy. When we meet hard times, they make us strong. And after everything has been said and done, our trials and temptations have gone through. Rewards come after trials and our desire, and it is our desires that usually tempt us into those very situations. And you know it, my brothers and sisters, that the trials that you are facing right now, most of them they came because of your own desires. But I want to give you up this day that our God is a gracious God. Even if we are in trials and temptations that we drag ourselves into them because of our desires. Because he endures in mercy. He is more than ready to save those who cry in penitence. When we lift up our eyes, when we lift up our faces to the cross and say, Lord, help me, I am sinking. When Peter was walking on water and he started drowning, he cried and said, Lord, save me. If we make the same cry even this morning, my God is more than able to save all those who come to him. Are you facing trials and temptation today, my brothers and sisters? Were you not counting it as joy? You were seeing as if God has let you down. But because of this, because of this lesson, you are saying, Lord, help me. I am drowning, but teach me as I am in these trials and temptations to count them as joy. Teach me as I am in these trials and temptations. Let them make me strong and mold me that I may be perfect and complete. And you're saying the perfection that abides in Jesus made also the perfection that assimilates, that comes into my life. And it is your desire that Jesus comes into your life and be your companion like Daniel as he go into the lion's den, like his friends as they go into the fire that is heated seven times, as they go into that furnace when they were facing those trials and temptations, right? just like those Hebrew boys, you are saying, Lord, grant me that power to overcome, to that, that, that resigning faith to know that you are with me. I want to tell you something, my brothers and sisters, before we pray, that as we go into the furnaces of this life, 
as we go into the lion's dens of this life, of the challenges and the problems that we meet, Jesus is never absent. Nebuchadnezzar asked a question. Didn't we throw three people? Who is the fourth man who I see in the furnace? When the boys were thrown into the furnace, there were three. But when Nebuchadnezzar came into the morning, he looked down and he saw four people walking in the furnace. And you want to invite Jesus to come into your furnace that you're experiencing right now. And I want to pray with you that you invite Jesus to be the fourth man in your furnace. You know the challenges that you are experiencing, but he is more than able to come to them to walk beside, to carry you, to lift you up so that you can overcome. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming again. And those who are going to shout hallelujah, this is the Jesus we've been waiting for, are those that have faced trials and overcome. Are those that have counted joy when they faced diverse temptations. Are those that restricted their desires so that they were not carried away by their desire. Is it your desire this morning, Lord, that you're saying, I want to receive Jesus as my personal savior. I want him to be the fourth man in my challenges. I want him to give me this power, this enabling grace, this enabling strength to count it joy when I face many diverse temptations and trials so that I endure, I persevere, and I know that he has my reward. When the trumpet shall sound, I shall say, oh, yes, this is the Lord we have been waiting for. If it is your desire, Lift up your hand, lift up your heart wherever you are so that we can pray together. We are now praying, our Father who is in heaven above. We want to thank you on this special Sabbath that you have brought us to listen to your word. We are praying that, Lord, you may give us power, authority, ability to overcome trials and temptations. We want to count it joy as we get into many trials and temptations. Lord, many people are now bedridden because of strains, they are bedridden because of houses, they are bedridden because of blood pressure. Why? Because we did not know that should, we should count it joy whenever we meet diverse temptations. But we want to thank you today for bringing this message to us, the message of salvation. May you save that brother and that sister they have lifted up their hands to receive you as a personal savior. And may you come into their challenges. People are suffering in the world. People are enduring quite a lot. But we are more than happy for we, are, for we know that when your cross is lifted, when you are lifted up, you draw all unto you. And we know that you will meet us at our various points of need. Guide us, Lord, as we travel through the journey of life. We want to be victors. We want to be overcomers. And we can only do this in the name of Jesus. For we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.